Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, an insider's look at nuclear safety. Former U.S. energy official Robert Alvarez tells Miles Benson where the nuclear industry falls short and why you should be concerned. Coming up on Earth Focus. Robert Alvarez, you say that we can't rely on the nuclear power industries to act responsibly when it comes to safety and that there are powerful figures and have been in powerful figures in the past in Congress who've essentially intimidated the Nuclear Regulatory Commission whose job it is to oversee safety. In 1998, Senator Domenici sought to cut 700 jobs from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Enforcement Division, which is basically wiping it out, and had, I guess, what you would call a come-to-Jesus meeting with the then chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Shirley Jackson. He was supported by his colleagues in the House who were willing and able to completely dismantle their nuclear safety enforcement program. The NRC, Chairman Jackson, heard the message. And from that point on, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission became more of an enabler rather than a regulator and pretty much dismantled the re regulatory reforms that arose after the Three Mile Island accident in 1979. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission became much more uh, dependent on industry self-reporting. In this country, how do we address the issue of spent fuels? The United States has been allowing, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has been allowing the reactor operators to stuff four to five times more spent fuel in the, these reactors than were, are, were in the pools at Fukushima. The reason this is so is that the original designs of the pools were to allow the spent fuel to essentially cool off. So you have to keep the the water cool and you have to keep the spent fuel cool because if it is not cooled, the pool is not cooled in particular, it can boil over, it can evaporate. The equipment that removes the heat, the pumps, the heat exchangers, those things can fail. And then what happens is if the water starts to drain, if there were an event, for example, such as an earthquake or an act of terror, which is something that we were concerned about eight years ago when we did our first major study about this, uh, were to cause the pool to drain. By the time the water reaches about three to six feet above the tops of the spent fuel, the radiation levels would be so high that they would be life-threatening to workers on the site. Once that fuel go catches fire, then you're looking at what a uh, colleague of mine calls a Chernobyl accident on steroids. Are the pools we have in the U.S. covered? They're not like the reactors. They're not what you think. The reactors have these thick concrete and steel barriers, like domes or, or structures around the reactor vessel that uh, serve as the sort of the final uh, barrier that prevents the escape of the radioactivity if the other things fail. The pools have none of that. They are in structures that you would find at auto dealerships. They are not considered nuclear safety re related equipment. In other words, if you have a blackout, a loss of offsite power, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does not require the reactor operator to have backup diesel generators for the pool water. The pools were really not considered to be uh, long-term storage sites for what we now find to be some of the largest concentrations of radioactivity on the planet. The reason why this happened is that these pools were only designed to hold this fuel for five years, and then after that, the spent fuel was supposed to go to uh, uh, a reprocessing plant where they would chemically separate out the uranium and the plutonium, and this was going to go into a new generation of reactors and, 
and, and then the other waste would be disposed of geologically. Well, that scheme sort of fell off the page 30 years ago because of proliferation and economics. So we don't reprocess fuel. Uh, we did once, and it turned into a financial disaster in the 1960s and early 70s. So how long do the rods sit inside the pool? They've been sitting there for decades. When the reprocessing option sort of uh, fell off the table, as they say, uh, the government then passed a law, or the Congress passed a law, called the Nuclear Waste Policy Act. And with that law, set forth a process to select a, a permanent resting place for these wastes, a, a geologic repository. And the law say it said that, oh, and uh, the repository would be opened by the end of January of 1998. So if Congress makes a law that says, put it here, and you open it then, well, the, every, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and reactor operators all assume, well, that's, that's the way it's going to be. So we can jam more of our spent fuel in the pools until such time this stuff is removed and sent to a disposal site. Well, that didn't happen because of a combination of, of technical obstacles facing this repository and the stiff political opposition. There are other ways, aren't there, to store the fuel that are possibly safer? Dry cask storage, for example? It costs more money. And is it safer? It's absolutely safer. I mean, one of the other things, going back to Fukushima, if you were to take a careful look at what was unscathed at Fukushima, it's the dry storage casks of the spent fuel. They were not at all in any way damaged. Why do governments try to conceal the facts from the public? Is it that they think the people can't handle the truth? They were afraid that the public would become so frightened and angry with what they were doing. And that because of the fact that people were being exposed without their knowledge and consent, things like that, that this would interfere with their ability to amass nuclear weapons. Especially uh, during the Cold War, the government engaged in constant and deliberate acts of public deception, misinformation. Uh, in order to prosecute the nuclear arms race. This kind of mindset has washed over into the nuclear power program. It's sort of the what they don't know can't hurt us mentality. What you sometimes hear some of the proponents of nuclear power say, which is, I think, is, is an honest expression on their part, is that it's more harmful to scare people than it is to tell them the truth. And I don't believe that. I think that you have to be truthful. Robert Alvarez, thank you very much. You're welcome. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.